Hello and welcome to the Hellraiser blog. Please, ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed today's blog, hit the subscribe button. The fight I'm going to cover today is Dave Allen, the white rhino, against Lucas Brown, Big Daddy Brown. Um, when I first heard of this fight, I thought maybe, just maybe, they're catching Lucas Brown at the right time. Lucas Brown has looked poor. That's how I describe him. He's, he's looked... Uh, not not the, the man that was really doing a lot of damage. They say the last thing to go is his punch. So I think Dave Allen really has to be switched on and make sure he doesn't get caught because I'm sure Lucas Brown can still punch. Um, but he has looked shocking in his last uh, few fights. Uh, I mean, when he uh, boxed Dillian White, he, he, he looked absolutely, uh, even before the fight, if you watched the Hellraiser blog we did for that fight, uh, when we correctly... Uh, predicted that he'd be beaten and he was uh, in some style. Dillian White completely knocked him, absolutely spark out. And um, to be honest, it was a sort of knockout where I, I sort of thought, that's the end of him. That is him, you know, he'd had a lot of inactivity prior to that fight. Uh, I know he was built up uh, for a period by Ricky Hatton uh, promotions and he, he sort of um, climbed through the ratings with Ricky Hatton. Uh, I... I sometimes feel a little bit um, put out when I see guys that were built up by a promoter then jumping, you know, going off and doing their own thing because I know, right, what it takes to, to, to build the guy up and, and get him the right fights, to get him the rating and get the, the position. I was actually out with Ricky Hatton the night that um, Lucas Brown beat Ruslan Shagayev and having taken fighters to Eastern Europe before, and it's not actually just to Eastern Europe, I mean, having taken fighters all over the world, when you go away from home, it's very difficult to get a win because everything is loaded, is stacked against you. When you bring them here, things are more stacked in your favour, certainly at least of getting a fair a fair fight. Um, when you go abroad, I've seen some shocking things, and Chechnya um, and Eastern Europe, uh, from my own personal experience, have never struck me as places where you're particularly going to get a fair deal. So for Lucas Brown to go out and... Admittedly, Ruslan Shagayev was not at his peak. He was a, a sort of, a, a, I guess, a faded version of Ruslan Shagayev. Shagayev at his peak was one of the better ones. Uh, of, of, there was like, you had maybe like the elite two or three, you know, like your Klitschko's, your, your, your top, top guys. And then you had maybe like a dozen or so guys that could all beat each other. And they did beat each other for different versions of the European and world title. And Ruslan Shagayev was one of those and he won the WBA but this is even at this point it's because he'd suddenly gone quite inactive and like he was fading out his career but then anyway he had an Indian summer Indian summer he won the WBA regular title whatever that is and he uh, defended chose to defend against Lucas Brown who came over and done the business against him I was out with Ricky Hatton actually the night that fight took place and uh, to me, it was a surprise. I thought he's going out there; they're selling out. You know, they're getting one big payday, and they'll be off. And no, Lucas Brown went and done the business. Um, and despite, I mean, you can watch the fight; um, you can find it on uh, YouTube. Um, and you'll see uh, the, the the rounds when Lucas Brown is uh, getting sort of in trouble. When Ruslan Chagov is on top, the round seems to go on forever. When Lucas Brown is getting the better of it, the round gets cut short. Maybe they just had a, an atrocious matchmaker who had a very bad grip of pressing time at the right, correct times to end the round after three minutes. Maybe, being the cynic that I am, maybe it was cheating. Maybe they were trying to perish the thought, uh, manipulate the, the lengths of the rounds to favour the home fighter. Maybe, just maybe. But, um, okay... Regardless, Brown goes and gets the win, which is very impressive. Then goes, um, I know he was with Hatton, he then left Hatton, he was um, inactive for a long period of time. I'd imagine there was disputes going on, as often happens when a boxer um, drops a promoter and, and moves on. But when he came back, he, he was markedly worse than the old Lucas Brown. And I mean, when he boxed uh, Dillian White, and we, you heard it on the Hellraiser blog. We told you, you know, expect this to happen. Um, he was in absolutely shocking physical condition, miles, miles, miles over his sort of ideal uh, optimum weight. 
and he got not completely spark out which is very damaging to the marketing of your fight because when you're trying to build a guy up you're trying to make out right this is potentially going to be the next champion the next one that's going to go and do something and if he'd have lost in a close or disputed decision out in Chechnya then you could say okay well yeah he went to Chechnya and he got you know somehow got rumbled he got a uh, sort of hoodwinked out of the, the title fight but when you're knocked out as Lucas Brown was knocked out by Dillian White spark out and he came in looked in terrible shape from the start got heavily knocked out um, and it looked also like his appetite for fighting had, had disappeared he didn't look like a guy that was hungry a guy that was there to put it all on the line he just looked like a guy who maybe had become a bit conceited like got a bit carried away with himself and nothing that happened in the, that, that fight or since then has changed my opinion. Although, on social media, Lucas Brown has since posted pictures of himself and he does look massively slimmed and looks in much better physical condition. Um, for me, look, once a guy's appetite for the fight has gone, there's a saying, it's not the size of the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog. And... Once that is gone, normally it is very, very... Yes, you can get your physical shape back, but can you get that mindset that when you're three or four rounds down and you're being wobbled and clumped and hurt to the body and it starts going further and further wrong, to dig deep and turn it around? And has Lucas Brown got that? Well, he's certainly got the punch to do it. And if Dave Allen takes his eye off the ball he will find out how hard Lucas Brown can punch and he could pay a very heavy price and it cost him the fight um, that said my experience of it is most of the time once they've gone over that bridge they've gone over that hill of you know uh, being prepared to put it in and he's obviously put some time in but you've got to understand he's now over 40 years old He's been very inactive, the, the, the latter part of his career, he's been extremely inactive and I think that's cost him his form, I think it's cost him probably a lot of money, it's cost him his position in the world ratings and, and the, the, the marketing impact of being knocked out on a big show as he was by Dillian White, I think it's very difficult to then go back to TV networks and present him again, oh this is a, a genuine article, this is a guy that's going places. Because all the hallmarks that he's displaying at the moment are of someone who, who's finished, someone who's over, someone who uh, is now there for the money. And that's why it might be shrewd matchmaking. Put Dave Allen, because it's a big name, it's a former world champion, version of a world champion. And um, it could be the right fight at the right time. It could be the, the, the fight that actually puts Dave Allen not just in the UK, but out there internationally, gets him up the ratings. He could, off the back of a win over Lucas Brown, get a very high uh, world rating, uh, Dave Allen, which not that long ago you'd have said, well, absolutely no chance. Of course that's not going to happen. Well, here you go. If, if nothing else, Dave Allen has proved people wrong to that extent. Um, we, I mean, when I look at the performances, the, the latest performances by Lucas Brown, you've got to say, um, I mean, obviously against Dillian White, shocking. Um, against uh, Sokolowski who, he, he was in trouble and you know let, let, let's be right I mean uh, Kamil Sokolowski very tough guy decent boxer I mean absolutely nowhere near world class and really a cruiserweight and if he's troubling Lucas Brown I've got to say do you know what at this point in his career I'm not going to back Lucas Brown I would say really it's a fight I wouldn't bet on. I'd avoid fights like this because if Lucas Brown can punch, as I always say in the blog, the last thing to go is the punch. I wouldn't gamble against Lucas Brown landing that punch, even if he's behind on points, even if he trails in the fight. And we know that Brown can punch. Dave Allen's not a bad punch. I ask Nick Webb. You know, he can definitely punch. But I have to go here for Dave Allen. I'm actually going to go for, for Dave Allen... I'm sort of 50-50, but I never do that on the Hellraiser blog. We always give a specific result. So I'm going to go for Dave Allen by a very late stoppage. I'm going to say round nine. Round nine. That's the decision is taken. Right, round nine. Uh, I hope Dave Allen. Good luck, mate. And if you enjoyed the blog, please hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.